Okay, how you doing, boss? Hop in. Rides on me, all right? Listen up. Let me tell you something. I just watched the new Peter H. Dimandis' episode, so you don't have to. Fasten your seatbelt. This one's about compute, jobs, and whether the whole thing's a bubble. Spoiler, it's not. It's a freight train. First thing out of the gate, AI is not a bubble. Quote straight from the convo. They kept hammering that point. AI has immediate economic value. Companies are paying real money, and revenue follows capability. NVIDIA's stock rising with forward earnings? That ain't tulip mania. That's demand. But a big caveat. All this magic eats compute the way I eat midnight tacos. Voraciously. Compute scarcity is the headline. Sam, Jensen, Elon, everyone's racing to lock up GPUs and power. You heard lines like, we'll be the first to 10 gigawatts and millions to billions of GPUs. OpenAI, NVIDIA deals, Jensen talking $100 billion. Sam, aiming for gigawatts per week. Bottom line, chips, power, and data center real estate are about to be the scarcest commodities on earth. They literally said, compute scarce. Translation, if you can't secure compute, your AI dream gets rationed. Distribution matters. Gemini overtook ChatGPT on US iOS installs. Gemini overtakes ChatGPT was the blur. Distribution and Google's reach move markets fast. Meanwhile, models race on benchmarks. Grok 5 hitting AGI-oriented tests, AR scores, and folks saying benchmarks will saturate in three, four years. Quote, we need new benchmarks. When everyone's optimizing for the same test, PR versus real general intelligence gets messy. Universities got a wake-up call. Perceived importance of college dropped from 75% to 35% since 2010. Tuition up 900% since the 80s, and grads are taking longer to find jobs. The point? Degrees as credentialing are unbundling. Acceptances, portfolios, and YC-style badges matter more. Advice from the pod? Endowments should buy GPUs and power plants, not just fancy buildings. The best educator in the world will be AI. Yeah, an AI university is on the horizon. Data Center Wars, XAI's Colossus 2, 110K GPUs, gigawatt scale builds, Tesla mega packs, and air chillers. Microsoft, Google, Meta, OpenAI, everyone's pouring capital. Quote from the show, multi-square mile super brain. Also note, Google's TPUs are reportedly far more power efficient. TPUs 5X more power efficient. So vertical integration matters. Owning silicon plus stack beats buying rent on someone else's chips. On the practical builder side, tools and agents are eating software development. Blitzy claims 80% or more of dev work autonomously, meaning companies can 5x engineering velocity. Duolingo reported employees 4 to 5x more productive with AI. Translation, productivity spikes can happen without layoffs initially, but that's not the whole story. Later, automation squeezes headcount where marginal human value is low, which gets us to jobs. They ran the tough numbers, Humans can become marginal or even negative value in certain cognitive workflows. Terrifying study quoted, doctors alone, 74% accuracy. Doctor plus GPT-4, 76%. GPT-4 alone, 92%. Quote, the human in the loop was doing damage. Ouch. The pod debated workweek predictions. Gates, Jensen saying two to four day weeks, but the taxi driver truth, if your role is replaceable by smarter, faster agents, you'll either be shifted, retrained, or unemployed unless policy, new jobs, or redistribution catch up. On policy and governance, Albania appointed an AI-made minister to reduce corruption. Tackle corruption with impartial decisions. Grim but interesting. An AI minister may outperform cronies if the data and training aren't rigged. They warned about who controls the training data, though. Bias still bites. Robots and data capture. 
Amazon's building AI glasses and plans to pilot 100K units with drivers. Record everything to train robots. Embodiment matters for physical intelligence. To teach robots physics and everyday life, you need real-world kinematic and telematic data. Some argued AGI doesn't strictly require embodiment, but to understand messy human life, you want the sensors. Drug discovery and health, DeepMind and others claim AI can shrink drug timelines from years to months. Examples, an AI design drug into human trials in 12 months, and 150 AI first small molecule drugs in 2025. Apple Watch got FDA clearance for hypotension alerts. Wearables plus AI equals continuous health signals feeding personalized models. Quote they used, AI could shorten drug discovery to months. That one's huge. Money and markets, big token moves. NASDAQ pushing tokenized securities. Robinhood EU already tokenized stocks. And even OpenAI, SpaceX tokens. Expect trading to go 24-7 and liquidity events to change. Also flagged, private mega caps like OpenAI holding endowment-like sums, Microsoft's stake and Meta's pledge better to lose billions than be late to superintelligence. Capital is pouring into compute and control. Takeaways if you're not already panicking or giggling. One, this isn't a bubble based on hype alone. Economic value is real and immediate. Two, compute scarcity will determine winners. Secure chips, power, or task-specific efficiency via distillation is your unfair advantage. Task-specific distillation was called out as a 100x cost difference. That's a business plan. Three, if you're mid-career, be the domain expert who pairs deep vertical knowledge with AI or build productized agents for your specialty. 4. Policy and distribution questions are real. Who owns the data? Who gets paid? And how do we avoid concentrated capture? They close with one obvious vibe. Hyper acceleration. This is a sprint, not a parade. Expect trillions in new markets, but also social disruption. Quote to remember, we are in a war footing. So strap in, secure your compute or your niche. Learn to design agents and maybe buy a mountain for pumped hydro while you can. That's it, boss. Meters off, stories told. Like and subscribe if you want more of this. Catch you on the next ride.